the hard part about potting is that my parents and my dad especially watches everything I do. So oh no, yeah. So he called me once during the pod, uh. or after a pod, and he was like, "Oh, I guess, I guess I know you do mushrooms now." Oh <laughs> no, mushrooms! Yeah, on dad no. See, that's one good thing about having the neglectful parents. They don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, they, you talk. I always wonder that. You talk about them a lot. You're very honest. Do they never? They not, never see. Not really. I mean, uh, they don't even know I do stand up. So it's. Uh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I was gonna say because I saw they were at the, the fully loaded tour. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they wanted to see what that was about, which was a wild thing. Is they're like, what are you doing? Some open mics. How's that going? And then they brought them to this arena that Bert sold out, and uh, it's like Tiffany Haddish and all these people and the free food and drinks, and they were they were freaking out. Yeah, that's like the tough thing about like potting, I guess, is that the more honest you are, the better it is. But then mm-hmm. you end up like, you know, somebody hits me up like, that's not what I said. I know, like, I know. All right, well, you know, I kind of had to fabric. Like I was on that dating show where I bombed. I talked about it on a pod with somebody. I was like basically roasting the host of it. And then he hit me up. He was nice about it. He was like, yo, let's bury the hatchet. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, boy. And I was like, ah, I was just kind of exaggerating for yeah, humor. Of course, of course. Well, it's a weird time because Colin Quinn said it best. It's the time where you can't say anything, but all we do is talk. Right. So it's this weird combination of like, we need a ton of content. We were talking for hours and hours all week. And then everything you say, you're like, was that bad? Am I going to get in trouble? Right. But all we do is talk. So we're just giving the, we're giving it away. We're giving all the the bad shit away well that's what i was gonna ask you too then you come up with bits on pods sometimes like i heard you say <laughs> yeah that yeah theo... sometimes well no i mean on theo's pod it was funny because i was like i felt proud at first because i like watched the pod before oh thanks for watching yeah and then i did the we did grove 34 and i was like dude you gotta make a bit out of the uh the feet it was like oh yeah yeah basically the bit was like uh i'm jealous of guys that like feet because... very jealous I'm jealous of guys who are in a feet yeah. Because they're everywhere. And you could be one of those guys like, hey, you coming in here? You got to take your shoes off yeah. and come to my house. <laughs> I can't do that with a bra. <laughs> you know? But anyway, I was like, you got to do that as a bit. You're like, I'll try it tonight. And then you did it. And it was like already a pretty fully formed bit. And I was like, oh, did you do that before? You're like, oh, I've been running it the past few weeks. A like, little bit. I mean, very loose. And then it was one of those bits I'm not 100% on. But when you text me that, I was like, all right, I'm going to go for it. Okay. So no, I, I, I still needed one. it. It's doing okay. I, it needs more, but uh, I'm figuring it out. Well, um, anyway, this is like the third time we've done this, the writing the joke thing. So thanks for doing it again. Yeah, lots lots happened. Lots changed. Yeah, you. well, first of all, you released a special, was it a week, two weeks now ago? Yeah, two weeks, yeah. Okay. You, How you do lost you, your virginity. <laughs> yes, I did. Last yeah. night. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Dad, but uh, what, uh, what, how'd it go, or how do you feel now that it's out? I'm, it- ju- I'm just glad it's out. I'm glad I'm done with it. It's like, it's like coming out of the closet. You know, you always hear these guys who are married for 50 years, they have seven kids, and they're like, I'm gay. I've been gay the whole time. I hate my wife. I hate yeah. my kids. I love dick. And that's how I feel. I'm like, get out, get it out. It's been all this buildup and all these uh, promotions and phoners and radio and all this shit. So just glad it's out. People like it. It's in the top 10. I can't. I can't wish for anything more. Are you reading, like, reviews and no, stuff? No. I read, I read a couple, and they were brutal. Really? Oh, yeah. So I, I'll never do that again. Okay. Is it, do you feel, like, I can't imagine the, the ma- like, the magnitude of, like, the Netflix special. Like, I'll put out a TikTok, get a bad comment, and be like, I'm an idiot. I should have never done yeah. this. Not that, obviously, I think the special's great, so I don't think there's, you should ever feel that. But is there that sort of, like, does it feel like you're on stage for a long period of time? Because yes. Because there's this, like... A hundred percent. It feels, it hurts, and you like, you tried hard, you put everything you had into it, and it's for them to be like, nah, not for me, hated it, he sucks, something about his face I don't like, I hate his voice, and these are all things I agree with, so it it makes it even uh, more painful, but I don't know, I think, somebody said it well, it's the price of admission. You know, if you're going to be a public figure and put shit out, you're going to get hate, you're going to get mean comments, it's just part of it, so you got to just accept that, and people are watching it. And I'm uh, getting a lot of nice messages, so you got to just focus on that. Yeah, that makes sense. And not everybody's going to like it. You know, like this huge Taylor Swift or whatever sells out the fucking uh, Madison Square Garden, but I'm not into her. Right, right. I, I wouldn't tweet at her like a fucking psycho. Yeah. But I, I don't, it's not for me, but 
She's killed it. Yeah, well, I've kind of realized if there is an opinion you can have, it, it is online. Like, somebody, yeah. somebody has said it. Even yeah. if it's, like, the most wild opinion, it's on there. So You, you, remember, you ever watch Game of Thrones? No, actually. Oh, okay. Well, I, it's not really my cup, but I watched it during the pandemic because I was about to kill myself and I needed something. Right. But uh, there's a scene where the queen, the big queen of the whole land, she's this beautiful blonde lady, she fucks up. And they basically cancel her, and she has to walk naked through the city. And everyone throws tomatoes at her and spits on her and jizzes right. on her. That's how things used to be, and we're not that different. We just do it online. Yeah. You know, it's the same shit. Yeah, and, like, I, I don't know. When I do post something, it just feels like all day it's that feeling of being on stage. And if it's not doing well, I'm like, I'm. it feels like a bomb that yes, is all day. Yes, I have that right now. I got a video I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with. Oh, really? It stings. But yeah. You, but then you're like, I got to put something up. Yeah, and, and so, I don't see who likes it. I see who does Like, I'm like, who doesn't like it, yeah, you know? Like, yeah. they'll see my story, and I'll be like, well, you, you didn't like my video. So yeah. Must have, yeah. I know. It's, it's a bummer, but. But the reality, too, is I think people just like, it's not like they're sitting there like this is an idiot they're just yeah. kind of like up oh, and swipe away it's one of the nice things people don't think about you that much right. which kind of sounds bad but i think it ultimately it's great right like no one's like oh sean sucks they're yeah. like eh, whatever yeah and then they're already off on their next thing and they got shit going on too that they're worried about yeah exactly so is there anything with the special um that you would do differently now that it's out well i always think and uh like Louis always said, or who who said this? Hold on. Louis says the clips are ruining comedy, but Seinfeld says the hours are ruining comedy. Interesting. That's his theory, and I kind of agree. Like everyone thinks you have to put out an hour. I see all these comics who've been doing stand up for twelve minutes, and they're like, "I'm doing an album," and I'm like, "You shouldn't. This lives on forever. Don't right. do an album. I know you want the glory and the tweets and the high five and the likes, but don't do the album. You suck." Yeah. So I always think. Yeah, this I think I'm I'm proud of the special. Whatever I worked really hard on it, but another year it'd be better. I mean that's just reality. Yeah, right. I also I saw the clip of Louis saying like the algorithms ruining comedy. Guys yeah. are like the minute clips. They're performing for the minute clips. And far be it from me to disagree with Louis about anything comedy related. Comedy related. But my one thought was, well, his whole show was like predicated on one minute stand up clips. It's like oh, a, you know what I mean. But I mean obviously there's more. Um, that was part of a bigger thing. Right, part of the show. right. So, yeah, it's and a, it's, it's relevant a good point. to the show a lot of the time. Right, right. Um, Seinfeld did it first. Seinfeld did it first, yeah. But, I mean, I guess I was just like, well, those are one-minute clips. Is that so much, so different? But I guess it's still like... And look look at Matt Reif. I mean, without those one-minute clips, he wouldn't be selling out... Uh, right. I mean, sure, he has his hours, but those clips, they really spread well. They share well. Do you think people are getting, like, tired of the crowd work clips, or is that... I think so. I know I am. Yeah. Uh, well, look. Crowd work is amazing if, if it's done well and it's natural, but you can see people what we call just clip chasing. Right. You know, they're up there going, what do you do? Ah, nothing there. Oh, is that your mom you're fucking? Ah, that didn't work. Okay. And you're like, do you have any ideas? Do you have any bits, any jokes to right. bring to the table? So it, it's definitely gotten, uh, it's like a contagion where they're like, I need that clip. I need that moment. Right. Now somebody gets shot on stage. They're like, yeah, I got shot. This is great. Right. I can post it. I have content. You're yeah. like, it's got shot, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, no, that's so true. Like, if somebody like is like yelling at them or charges the stage, anything like that, it's like grounds for a very viral moment. And it doesn't totally. even matter if you were like handling it well. Right, right. I've exactly. seen so many where I'm like, well, you kind of seem like an asshole here. Yes, yes. Uh, or, or how about the one where the crowd is funnier than the comic, and oh, you're like, no, yeah. What do you? This makes you look horrible. This guy, this uh, accountant it got views, killed. So it got views. Right. That's it. Um, My friend has a theory because some of them are so unfunny, but they'll have like 10 million views. And I'm like, why does this have so many views? Let me rewatch it. Let me see if I missed the joke. Eh, I might have missed it again. So now I've watched it 30 times. Right, And right. so I, that's why it has so many views because it's actually so bad. Yeah, the algorithm is like, this must be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. makes sense. Um, I'm also like interested in like the difference between – like podcast humor versus stand-up humor because there's times where sure. I, I wonder like i'll hear somebody's joke on stage the audience laughs but i'm like huh i wonder like could they have just said this to a camera and got the similar view count the similar like mm, comedic no you know i don't I mean? think so no I, I think a pod is a whole different thing it's a it's a conversational laugh like you hear a lot of I like him on pods not in his act or like him in his act hate him on pods right they're very different it's almost like a sitcom what about versus... a solo pod Solo pod is is still different, but that's closer. It's closer. Like, Bill Burrow going a rant on a pod, and it's fucking 
amazing. Right. But that rant in a stand-up special, you'd be like, I haven't gotten a laugh in a while. Right. It's just how we, like, we do, we do a pod, me and Joe List, and then we do live pods, and they're wildly different. Because that crowd makes you react differently. I was going to ask you about that. Like, how do you, because I know that you get very, um, anxious about silence on stage oh yeah so when you're like doing the live pod do you feel that same anxiety or is there a level of like well it's a pod so i have freedom to be same anxiety but it's less because they know it's a podcast there right. are they're fans of the pod and i got another guy or a group of guests up here with me so you can take it off you for a second that makes sense but with stand up it's just uh gotta keep going only you do you think it betters you as like a storyteller on stage when you're doing that sort of uh live pod Eh, maybe i I don't i don't think so i think uh i think i'm just like freaking out the whole time oh really yeah you know it's funny because you like don't like telling stories on stage yeah and at comedy dojo i saw you know you do the q a at the end and somebody Uh asked you to tell a story yeah and dude you got like a thousand like there was no there was just as many laughs had you been telling jokes? Like, yeah, maybe. People, I get this a lot. Like, why are you telling stories? Bill Burr was like, you got to tell stories. I'm like, ah, nobody wants to hear my stories. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. But, you know. Well, also, that was my crowd, too. That was my people who came out. So I think they'll they'll give me a little more love, and they actually want to hear the stories. But if I go up at the cellar with a bunch of tourists, and I'm like, let me tell you about my childhood. Pull up a chair, and we're going to harken back to 1994. I think they'd be like, huh? But, I mean, other people do it there. Yeah, yeah, I guess succeed. you're right. I don't know. It feels a little self-indulgent to me. You think? Well, let me tell you about me. Yeah, uh, but that, that's, like, what, like, makes Louis great, for example, is it's, like, this guy's, like, he's, like, painting a picture of his, like, psyche by, like, going into who right. he is. It doesn't mean that, he, and he's not doing it from a place of, like, I'm sick. It's, like, a place of, like, I'm I'm sick deeply. Like, right, right. Like, it's, like, a condes- or self-deprecating yeah, yeah. Well, he's so good at it. He's so good at punching it up. I don't know. I have this, and I've never said this on a microphone before, but I have this weird thing where you ever have something happen to you, like a hobo will try to rob you or, you know, something with a lady, and people go, that's a bit. You got to tell it on stage. Right when someone says that, I feel this weird pressure. I'm like, I can't think of anything. Nothing's coming to me. Oh, but if you're like, write a joke about cups, I can do it. Yeah, so, it's kind of like a mental block. They yes, put, yeah. I get the mental block. You're like, how are you not talking about that? You got this thing happened to me. A steamroller ran over your wife's dildo, and you still used it. That's gold. And I'm like, oh, is it? Uh, I don't know where to go with it. I'm like, steamroller. What's funny about steamrollers? I start panicking. But right. if you go, hey, what's up with tables? I'm like, all right, I can work on that. Interesting. I guess it's like that pressure. That the pressure. Of, yeah. Anthony DeVito has this great. He's got a crazy childhood. His mom's dating a blind black jazz musician. Uh, and his dad died, and he goes, I've never felt more pressure to write a bit. Interesting. So he got a laugh out of not being able to come up with the the bit because it's all this crazy shit. Right. So um, that's pretty genius. That is cool to hear, too, because, I mean, as you know, not to bring it to a dark... I had a death in the family, whatever, but some people were like, yeah, like... You know, just turn it into art. Yeah, And I'm yeah. like, and part of me is like, well, that's cool. Like, it's cool to be able to think of it that way. But part of it is also like, ah, oh, really? Like, I don't know. It kind of seems weird to yeah. like, my, like, I'm like, now I have a new thing I can mine for comedy. Right. But I still, I have tried it. So, I'm, you know, I'm a hypocrite for saying No, it, you but. have tried. And I, I commend you for trying. And I think that's the way to go. But I just, I'm just, the mental block thing kicks in. Yeah. The similar thing, too, is um, the pressure of like, oh, well, people will say to me, They'll be like, oh, you're killing it online. And that compliment makes me like, fuck. Uh, like, yeah. Yes. I'm like, oh, no. Like, it's until I'm not, you know? Yeah, or like, it's good like, one. Uh, so it feels like a similar mental block. Yes, I, yes. I can't even accept a compliment without being like, fuck. Like, that, this is something I could lose. or maybe. Right. And it's like, am I better online than I am on stage? Then you start having that whole debate in your yeah. head. So, yeah, I, that, I totally relate to that. It's funny because it is a compliment. It is. But you somehow can spin it like, oh, that's not good. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, totally. That's what we do. I mean, if I was Matt Reif right now, I'd be nervous. Like, oh, that, same. Because I'm like, this is just some awesome thing that I could like. It's just like he gets to the top that yeah. quick. He could fall that. I don't know. It takes a real uh, sure footing to just stay the course. And I think he's a smart guy. I think he, he knows what he's doing. And I think he, he's 
been doing it longer than we think. Everybody's like overnight success, but I think he's been around. I don't, yeah, I don't know the they say it was like fourteen or fifteen that he started. I oh, think. oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. So he'll he'll be all right. He's just got to like keep his eye on the ball. Right. It can get it can get tough up there. Yeah, I'm not saying he should be anxious. I'm just saying no. if that was me, I'd be like, fuck. How do I keep this? How do I keep the ball in the air? You I'm know? the same way. Like, and you never want to go down. In yeah, comedy. you want to keep going up or at least stay the same. You never want to go lower. But is there anything kind of personally that you are like stand up wise or hoping to become better at that you? Well, I'd like to get better at that. And uh, at what? At like what you said, like telling a story. Oh, I see. Lose that mental block. But I guess the only way Bill Burr said uh, the only way to learn how to go left is to go left, like right. in basketball. I see. So I got to just do it, and I'll probably bomb with it for a while. And then everybody goes, "Boy, what happened to Norman? He sucks now." And you're like, "I know, I'm working on it." The uh, the story thing's interesting to me too because it's a, that's a place where I'm like, well, you could just tell this on a podcast. Oh yeah. So like, uh, I saw Shane last night. I won't say what story, but he did a story that I saw him do on Parks Protect Our Parks. Oh really? That he's working on stage. Now. Oh good. And I was like, that's interesting because like this was a pretty viral story from that episode. Yeah. That he's now making a stand up bit. Smart. See, he's got. And that'll give you, like, six minutes right, right. there. So, like, you're already uh, ahead of the eight ball. Okay. I guess my anxiety would be like, wow, they heard this story uh, already. Oh, no, but you can add a bunch of beats to it. You yeah. can put an ending onto it. It's it's a whole different thing with stand-up. Okay. That's a good way of looking at it. Also, though. if it went viral, you're already like, there's something here. Right. Like, you kind of have a head start with that. Okay. So, smart of him to do that. And he'll have a new hour quicker with shit like that. I'm writing 12-second cup bits. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I I have that mental block like I'm something's wrong with me where I, when I was single I'd hit on all these girls and I liked to chase and it was fun. But if somebody goes, hey, this girl likes you, you should go talk to her. I would freeze. Right. I'm already in. She likes me, and I could. It was harder. It was actually easier to go up to the girl I would probably not get with or yeah. have a shot with because I don't know why that would that would I would be more drawn to that but the girl who liked me I'm like I don't know what to say to her she likes me uh, this is weird interesting I guess the benefit I, I do like tinder and hinge in that that it breaks the barrier of you know that she likes you so I guess I don't have that yeah as much, but it's, a, it's a problem interesting I'm, I'm fucked up um, well I did want to ask you about so the last time we did this we talked about uh, your bit that ended up making it to the special yeah which it's, was it's the cooking. Native American one yes yes um, I, rec I screen recorded the one we did like the, the first time you did it or at least that I, I think it was recorded and uh, then the Netflix one just to see the difference uh, oh oh great yeah I are you going to slice that in yeah I'll show it to them like great. not on my phone but uh, do you care if we just quickly watch these no no I mean is it is it both yeah, it's both. Okay, this is all. This will be uncomfortable, but I, I can do it. Okay, okay, sorry. No, uh, you're good. So this is the first time I've recorded you doing it. You know the best time to be promiscuous was in Native American time, like the Aztecs, you know, because they used to sacrifice virgins to the gods. They throw them in a volcano. Man, I would be the biggest slut on the reservation. <laughs> it's a good sign. We're right? just yeah, the premise. Got to chuckle. Hey, ma'am, we need to throw you in the volcano. Are you a virgin? No, huge whore. Huge whore. <laughs> All right, now we got Are two left, so I know where I'm on. going here. We got a bit. On the side of the wigwam. <laughs> yeah. He's talking to the wrong lady. I put the hoe in Navajo, all right? Yeah, yeah. I fucked the whole tribe. He's like, all right, well, you know. This is the part I person. told you to try <laughs> that bomb, but uh, so you'll notice that's not in the – I'm not going to – when I show them, it yeah. won't be a video of my TV, but um, a lot of that is still in here. I yeah, think, yeah. Is, all the stuff you didn't say made yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just I think it's crazy. It's 2023. We still make women feel bad for being promiscuous. Sluts are the best. Eh? Why would you make them feel bad? I did like how you also bridged the gap of like the you're talking about how women uh, make themselves or they, they feel bad about being slutty, I guess. That's the spoonful of sugar, you know, like, hey, I'm on your side, ladies. Right. I, it's crazy that you guys get shamed. Right. You know what the best time to be a promiscuous woman was was Native American time. Inca, Aztec, Mayan, because they used to sacrifice virgins to the gods and throw them in a volcano. Holy shit, I'd be the biggest tramp on the reservation. I mean, it could save your life. Chief walks up, how, ma'am? Crops are dying, we gotta sacrifice a virgin. You a virgin? No, huge whore, huge whore. You are way off, baby, way off, all right? I give the best arrowhead on this side of the wigwam, okay? You don't know what you're dealing Still with, there. all right? I put the hoe now in the hole out here, okay? Yeah, that was new, you know that was new. That took forever to think of, by the way. That's me. 
tell you, I think I like that system better. Reward the this fun part guys, is where get rid of the boring ones, you know? Yes. You know, there was some I needed a button on it. Going, you <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was it. That took forever to come up with. I, really? I, it was just this loose thing that was working, but it would fall off a cliff. Right. And then I finally came up with that, but I tried like 20 different things before that one worked. That's interesting. It's literally just two sentences that it took to complete the bit, but it took you... And do you know what, like, what was the... Where were you when you came up with that final, like... Uh, I was at the stand, I remember, and I was, like, about to go on, and I was like, God, I gotta crack this thing, and there was a guy on stage, and I was next, and I was like, come on, come on, I was like, maybe this, and I tried, and it worked a little bit, but I was like, if I say it better, it might work better, and then I kept trying it, and polishing that sentence, and it worked better. You thought of it right before going up? Right before going up, but again, it was weeks of, here's another line, how about this line, and none of them really tied it up, and then I just... It just hit me before I went on. I was like, I'll try this, and it worked. What, uh... Which sounds easy. Like, oh, it just hit me. But it was, again, weeks of right. failure and trial and error. And you have to... Kind of, I think that one thing I kind of have noticed, too, is you kind of have to be interested in the bit still. Yes! Because yes. if you're kind of bored by it, your brain won't decide to think about it. Like, totally. Totally. you got to be motivated. And you have to be able to step out of the bit enough to see it with real eyes. Right. Because you're so... You know you know when you say a word over and over, it kind of loses meaning? Yes. It's the same with a bit. If you just keep saying it, you're like, I don't even know what this bit means anymore. You have to stay the course. Like, what is your point? What is the premise really saying? Right. You know, instead of just being like, is this funny? Is that funny? What am I trying to get to with this bit? Okay. What was the original point three weeks ago or four weeks ago when I thought of it? Right. And then stay on that. But it's hard to do that because it all gets muddy with, like, trying all these different lines. Yeah. That's that- why sometimes your friend comes in and goes, what about this? And you go, how the fuck did I miss that? It's because he can see it with fresh eyes. Right, right. One thing I was going to ask you about is, like, there was a time where once I have my, like, tight tan or whatever, I'm not nervous to go up anymore. But then I get bored of those jokes, and yep. suddenly I'm nervous to go up again because I'm, like, trying to sell them something. That that's, I... uh, that's so relatable. I have the same thing. Really? That's why starting a new hour is so fucking daunting. Be- because you're like, oh, I got nothing now. Yeah. At least you got that 10 to fall back on. Yeah, but I guess my point is that the 10, make, I become nervous to even do the 10 I know works because I almost feel unconvinced by it because oh, I'm bored by it. Oh, no, no. No? That's in your head. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Keep doing it. You got to look at it like a pillar. You know, like an hour, you have like five pillars, you know, and that 10 is a pillar now. You got a pillar. It's holding up the house. You're trying to build a house. Right. You can't build a house without the, the pillars. Okay. So now you just got to work on the next part. Okay. And uh, But I get it. It does get scary to try the new, but that nerves are good. Right. The nerve, you want the nerves. That's, that means you give a fuck, and that means you're trying something. Okay, that's good to hear because uh, last night I was like, again, like I'm, before I'm going up, it's only like 10 to 12 minutes, but I'm just like, Nerve, like a little nervous, and I'm like, damn it, I wish I could just be like a little more relaxed at this point. But no, that's a good thing. Okay, you should be happy with it. It's almost like a lady, like if you've been with a girl for a while and it gets kind of stale and boring. If you're nervous again, you're like, oh, that means I like her. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, it's the same with a bit. Interesting. Well, did you uh, did you bring any new stuff today that you wanted to work <laughs> out? Or yeah, I got a couple ideas. Okay, some are not good. Some I'm kind of excited about. One is super dark, so I need to find a way to massage it for the okay, for the masses. Cool. I brought a dark one too. Great, so we can we'll we'll be balanced here. All right, great. What, what is it? We sound like a couple of slave owners. <laughs> yeah, I brought a really dark one, so I'm kind of worried no one will buy it. No, okay. <laughs> You're queuing it up too because it, it involves slavery, so <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, so my friend has a daughter, and he found her diary. She's like 17 or whatever. So he's like, oh, my God, she's sexually active. It's freaking me out. I wish I never read it. It's I, I know too much. I'm, I'm bummed out now. And I thought, well, kind of makes it good that they got Anne Frank when they did. Right. Because if she was two years older, that book would be completely different. You know, that was like a, I read that book in eighth grade. It was like an important book. It was powerful. But if she was two years older, it would just be another hand job, huh? You know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. wow, this is it. Kind of, it would take away from the the poignancy of the book. That book like helped people realize what happened and how horrible it was. But if there's hand jobs and finger banging in there, it kind of dilutes the, right. the book. So I'm saying I'm not glad the Nazis killed Anne Frank. That's not the point. But even the dad eventually would be like, I published this book, but. Can these Nazis get here a little quicker? I mean, right. this is brutal. So yeah. that, that's that's where I'm Or maybe where he I'm omitted at. a few pages. Like, oh, like, yeah. yeah. They're like, um. <laughs> right. Like, we can't put that part in. Right. I don't know why my brain went to, like, 
she Please. was like she was lusting over Hitler even like she's, oh, he's kind of he's actually kind of cute yeah. like it's like okay we'll get rid of that right or, these guys are coming into my house. They got these sharp uniforms on. I gotta say, yeah, <laughs> and like, yeah. and she's like, no. Yeah, you like realize that she's like totally sympathizing with them. Yeah. And, um, have you been trying it on stage? I've done it maybe three times. I did it last night at that Bowery Electric we did, and uh, it does okay at the end. But the beginning is so jarring for people. Like, yeah. are you glad she got? I'm like, no, no. I'm just. I gotta set this thing up, and so. Uh, I need a way to to put the spoonful of sugar in the beginning. And my mind also goes to like why. I mean, at least I went to it with your friend. It was like, well, why do you read the diary to begin with? Oh, maybe there's something with Anne Frank's dad. Like, hey, why did you why did you read your daughter's diary? Right, right. I mean, I guess it makes. Wait, was it the dad that found it? Is that how it, I don't really know the? I think so. Yeah. Okay. And he was like, oh my god, I didn't really know my daughter. It's actually a hell of a story, but. Uh, he was like, I found, I, re I learned who my daughter was through this book, and I think the world should see it, and the blah blah blah. Right, so, maybe uh, or something about like pages where she's like maybe talking bad about him that he omitted. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah, she was a great kid. Apparently, there's no maybe he did omit because there's no I hate I hate you, Dad. You're such a nerd. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's what kids usually do. Huh. Is there any other famous diaries in history? Mm, that that seems to be the big diary. I don't think so. No, I don't. Th I think diaries kind of went away with the phone. Yeah, now the diary's on the phone. It's like the notepad. Yeah, maybe that could be something. There's something. Thank there. God, diaries are over. Because um, that used to be a big thing. Like, oh, we're reading your sister's diary. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, and it, interesting that people would write down their darkest thoughts that mm -hmm. could be found like that. Oh, that's interesting. Like, now we just put everything... Everything's public. Right. Back then, it was like, I want this hidden, locked away. Yeah. We had, like, a lock on it, a lot of yeah. these diaries. And now we just, hey, I got a miscarriage again. Yeah, you know, like, we that's tweet just, it. It's like a virtual diary. Right, for the for the public. Right. That That's an interesting way to go with it. See, right. now we got some meat on it. This okay. is great. This is good. But where? how do you... I guess, how do you make that fun? Well, I mean, it's it, the idea I'll is... i play with it. All right. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no, that's fine. I, I do think, like, I'm, I'm just curious what your mind would go to make that funny. And, yeah. Because I think that's also one thing I want to become better at uh, or would just like to do in general is, like, um, those jokes that also are, like, somehow societal commentary. You know what I yes, mean? Yes, yeah, of course. You do that a lot. And um, I feel like that's somewhere you could do that because it's, like, you know, commenting on how people, instead of, like, writing to themselves. Yes. It's like, oh, I'm just going to tell everybody. Totally. I think if you can get to a bigger piece and like kind of, uh, I don't say make a statement, but like if you can make people think and go like, oh yeah, that's true. It's better than just, you thought I was going to go this way and I went that way, right. which will get a laugh. But if you can actually go, why do we do this? I think that's like really. Because then you're out in public and then you're like, you're thinking about the bit. You're like, oh, I'm yeah. like, a... not to bring it back to the algo, but I have a couple jokes that don't really hit like in my old act, and I was like, I'll just throw them online. And those got millions right. because it has like a, a point to it. The Peloton one. Did Peloton! Perfect but that was example. in the special. That was, I put it in because it, it got like 5 million views like out of the gate. And I was like, wow, I thought I was about to drop that bit. It wasn't getting a laugh. Or right. it got laughs, but it wasn't killing. And uh, people loved it. it. It hit home. That, that border bit. Did you see my bit about the, the border? Yeah, yeah. Here's my thing with the border. I feel like every country is like a woman, and the border is the vagina. You know? Yeah, and everybody's trying to get in. You know? People come from far and wide, pay a lot of money. Some people get married just to get in. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the president, the president's like uh, the overprotective dad, like, get away from there. And you want to be like, dude, relax. She's a whore. <laughs> All right? People been going in and out, in and out, in and out for centuries, all right? Even my grandpa had a piece. Let it go. <laughs> yeah, ladies, the vagina, that's your border, and you're always on border patrol. That's why when you go out with a guy who's trying to sleep with you, you're like, how old are you? Where are you from? What do you do? That's customs. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, and the passport, that's the condom. Yeah. If you get in without a passport, whew, that's a wild country. <laughs> oh, yeah. That 
bombs all day long. But I put it online. It got 2 million views because I think people were like, ah, that's, that's a good point. Uh, oh, that oh. was on Facebook. It went viral first, yes. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you showed me. I was like, well, maybe I'll put it on Instagram. And it, it did well there. Yeah. No, I think I, I ripped it for you. I, th- I don't think I showed you it. But, oh, okay. Yeah, oh. but it was, it was a good bit. I actually thought it was a great bit. I'm surprised that you weren't. Uh, I've tried it since because I was like, hey, it's, a, it's an old bit I never put anywhere. I'll put it in my act and it still bombs. Okay. So, fascinating. Should I hit you with the dark yes, one? Yes, well, yes. I've told you about it, but I've changed it slightly, and it's been working for like the first time I've added stuff. And there's one part that I think you'll really be able to help with. But basically, Great. it was about how I have this professor that was a vegan. And oh, I love this. I love this angle. Okay, okay. So he was saying, um, basically, he said to us that one day we're going to eat or look back on eating meat like we do slavery. Yeah. And then later in the class, he was like, if you guys don't want to stop eating meat entirely, something you can do that will really help is do meatless Mondays. And then, so the bit is like, well, do you think there was like abolitionists back then being like, just don't do slaves on Saturdays? <laughs> That's great. Um, Casual Friday, no yeah. slaves. Yeah. And then one uh, one person said to me like, it's like, oh, we're doing a pizza party today or <laughs> something. That's kind of fun. Right, um, right. But I think the thing that I would be like, I, I was like, do you think abolitionists? We're kind of like vegans back then, where it's like, oh, here comes oh, this guy. Oh, that's good. Like they, everybody hates them. Yeah. Like they're like the, the, the lull of the party. Right. And then I thought I had one line that doesn't really get a laugh, but for, it makes me laugh, where it's like, you know, I, I do it for the environment. Because so you're not even doing it for the slaves. You're doing it for like, because there's some vegans that are like, oh, I do it because it's better for the environment. Right, not right. But um, the well, one line. I this is a great, uh, great comparison. Okay. Really yeah. smart connection. Um, my thought, my my brain goes to a couple of places. One, this is going to be hard to pull off, but there's a lot of compares, like uh, uh, parallels between the way we treat animals and the way we treat it. You whip them, they right, work for free. Right. Uh, some people fuck them. Yeah, you know yeah. that could be a, a big laugh there. It's hard. You know what's funny too is uh, um, I've done it in a black room. Did really well. Yeah. Did it in an all white room, and it was kind of like it went silent, of and course. I was like. Um, you my, gotta do the whole slavery's wrong. I know you yeah, gotta do all that bullshit up top. Yeah, yeah. For and, the for the honkies, right? And my buddy Delaney, uh, he's a comic. He's black, and he he was helping. Me, he sent me a bunch of ideas oh, and stuff. Oh, great! And I'm like, I wish, I wish I could just like show your photo up there and be like, <laughs> he helped me write this. But, um, but yeah, just the comparison of the two people. I think Beyond Meat. You know how they like genetically oh, modify? Yeah, yeah. It's like Beyond Slaves. Right. That's like Dolezal. It's What's like Dolezal? A, oh, Rachel Dolezal is like beyond. It's like a Beyond Burger of black people. She's uh, she's the woman who tried to tell everybody she was black. Oh, and she's oh, not. And she, oh, that's funny. I did go. My, I was thinking maybe Beyond Slaves is like white slaves or something, so it doesn't matter. Oh, we right, don't care right, as much. Right. Yeah, yeah, we don't care as much. The Irish were slaves. The Jews were slaves. Right. I think there's a lot here. Hold on, I had another idea for you with this uh, slaves, uh, meat, meatless Monday. Slaveless Sunday, you get a little yeah. alliteration. Um, Maybe that's how the weekend started. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, hold on. Slaveless Sunday. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, in a, in a bunch of hundred. I love the abolition, abolitionists are like vegans then. Yeah. You know, like, sure, I would want I, I want a burger, but I'm yeah. a good person. Yeah. Well, something people say to vegans a lot is like... Uh, like do you when you smell it do you miss it you know they say <laughs> or they like or like can you does your mouth water or like, right or they bring their own food to parties Ooh, how about my friend's a vegan and he'll get drunk and like slip up oh really i wonder if any slave uh, abolition was like oh i had a slave but i was drinking <laughs> yeah. that's awesome you know i was drunk at the time i like that too i, I needed help with a, my roof or something um the other thing that prof- this is true, so the, 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 the I changed the bit because it was a little confusing. But the class was a vegan class; it was all about veganism mm. in general. And so he, it's like it's actually a cool book. It's Animal Liberation, and I did walk away from the class like oh, I tried being vegan for a month and I caved. But um, the I asked him once. I was like, it was after Thanksgiving. The professor, I was like, oh, so like, what do you do for Thanksgiving? You eat a tofu turkey or whatever? And he was like, well, I'll be honest with you. Um, I went to Las Vegas like a couple years ago. I got a voucher for a free steak dinner, and I've been eating meat ever since. Ah, and I got I, a free slave. Yeah, one free. Yeah, it's like, well, he's free or whatever. So just caving, like having a slave because he was free or something. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's great. 
Oh, I had another thing. Uh, slavery. Shit. Hold on. No. Oh. oh, shit. Cut all this out. Yeah. This is horrible. This is why I stopped taking weed gummies. My uh, recall is gone. Dude, I, I know. I smoke every day, so I... Really? I, yeah. Oh, geez. Does that worry you? Uh, I'm a little bit, but... Well, once somebody told me that, I just quit cold turkey. Oh, really? Like, I can't. Uh, this is all we have is our brain. I don't smoke during the day anymore, or I try not to because I will be way too tired for a show. I don't feel yeah. funny or anything. Yeah. But I do think about what you said, which is like, oh, I used to be a janitor, and it's a lot easier to just go make people laugh for 10 minutes than. Because like, no, I'm yeah. like, how do you do stand up tired? You're like, what do you. Because yeah. I, I roofed at one point. Exactly, like, exactly. Um, Wait, I, I had, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I would like for this bit, like, it would be cool to still make a point that is like like i don't disagree with yes. the idea that one day because here's my prediction for the future they're going to make genetically modified meat that is very just as good and the future generations are going to look at us like how could they do that and i feel like that's the robots ro- what do you mean well genetically modified meat will be in the future and robots will do slave work. oh they're the beyond slaves yes they're oh, the beyond slaves that's cool which sounds like beyonce but uh, <laughs> they're the Beyond Slave. Robots are the are the the Beyond Burger. Interesting. Because no one gets hurt, you right. know. And it's uh, it's all genetic. It's all or genetically modified. It's all modified. It's right. All, That's know, actually technology. really cool. But yeah, because I do think like uh, and the the one thing I'm never gonna I don't think I'll try this, but like the idea that if you do eat meat, like you, you can't exactly say you wouldn't have had slave. But the thing that people get mad about is yeah. they think you're equating. Either that you're equating slaves to animals, yeah, of course, or that you're saying that it's just as bad. Because another thing they talk about in that book is like um, they compare it to the Holocaust. In that 12 billion, I think it's 12 billion cows a year, wow, are killed, and so they're like that's pre-, and then it's like a torturous death. And yeah. So, but like people will get mad, like how dare you compare it to the Holocaust? Like, no, we're not saying that it's on the same level as like a human. Sure. But it's just like you're okay with a pretty fucked up thing happening. Yes, yes. Because everybody else is doing it. Right, right. And so I do think there's something in that. But I don't know. That, I think you say that up top. Really? That, that'll just clear the air. Like I'm not saying slaves and animals are the same, but it is death, a big death of, of, a, of a living thing. Yeah, that you know? feels pain and... What about, I think what this bit is such a heavy bit, you kind of got to go silly to take the edge off a little bit. Okay. You know, and uh, so uh, I think the angle of a um, a vegan just being like, I only eat meat uh, every now and then, you know, and they'd be like, I only have slaves when I, you know, here on Christmas, yeah. you know, like keep it like that whole thing of uh I have meat once a year, you know, just because yeah, I can't yeah. handle it. Like, I got a slave one day, one day a year. Yeah. It's, a, it's a cheat day. Right, yeah. You know, you have a slave day. cheat day. Oh, that's good, too. So keep it, like, relatable, just like, and, and surface level. Like, uh. Right. And then there's a the thing of, like, we still have slavery. It's just called interns. Oh, yeah, you know? right, right. You just change the name. Yeah. I'm sure they're not out there in the sun lifting bricks and shit. But yeah, and they're allowed to leave at the end of the day or whatever. Yeah, but, but they're getting coffee for you and doing your laundry or whatever, and they're not getting paid. So yeah. like, you can do something with that. Like, There's sh- workarounds. Yeah, you, we have, you have workarounds. You're still, you're not eating meat, but there's uh, there's some egg in that, but, in that right. uh, cake. Yeah. So you're not full vegan. Well, that's there's some, like, Nazi vegans that are, like, any sort of like uh, animal involvement that right. like, do not oh for sure yeah you know there's there's a little uh meat grease in that fry fry batter you right. know there's always something there was a girl i liked to, or this is just a super mega hot girl in college that was like all about veganism it was her whole identity and i was like i might go vegan just so i could like talk to her sure and, like, uh, oh that's great do you think there's uh, guys who are like I, I i got rid of my slaves to fuck this chick <laughs> yeah yeah that's huge okay that'll hit because that's uh, relatable and again sillier uh, takes it off a little. That the hard part about like it's fun. I would. I'm curious about this. When you have a lot of stuff like this, how do you like package it's it? It's tough. Because it feels like too. I don't have that many shows, and then right. if I do have a show, I want to do well. So yep. I'm like, so I could do it at an open mic, but some open mics aren't exactly the best gauge. This is why you gotta sit down and write. Like all these things we're saying should be written down on a piece of paper, and then you just attack it one by one, and then you eventually. After a, you know many days of writing, you can start to go, I'll do this part. I'll do the intern part here. Then I'll do the silly part with the dating. And I, I fucked her. I okay. tried to fuck her just so I got rid of my slaves for her. Then you tie it all up. you know. So 
That's why you got to write. You know, people are like, I don't, I work on it on stage. But like, you'll never get a big chunk with a big ending if you don't sit down and put it together. Because that's half of stand up is organizing. organizing. You got to organize the bit. You got to know what's first, what's last. And you could do it on stage, but it'll take you five years. Yeah. And then you're sitting there like, wait. Uh, exactly. Right. It's like saying, I'm going to shoot a movie, but I'm just going to shoot it and see what happens. And I'll worry about it later. Like, no, no, you got to storyboard it. You know, you got to block it. You got to edit it. You know, there's so many factors. It's the same with stand up. You got to do the, the writing. Um, selfishly, I have one more thing that was in that bit that I would like please, to say for, so I could look at it later I, for I the organization. I think we got a, a good bite on it. Sweet. I yeah, think we I got think a lot so out too. of this. Uh, there was one like part that I was thinking about was the conversation the abolitionist would have or the, the slave owner would have with the slaves for the day off mm. would be like, all right, you know, like. It's, it's Sunday, it's Labeless Sunday, so, like, you guys can just, like, I don't know, like, um, be like, I guess you can leave for the day, but if you're not back by sundown, you're considered runaway. Yeah, or like, yeah. Or it's like, or I could just pay you today, but you don't right. really have a reason to have money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The conversation, like, what that would look like. I don't sure. know, that, that was one thing I was thinking about. But no, if it's, no, yeah, that's something. What's interesting, and then now we're getting to a bigger point here, is, sure, we stop slavery, but we also invented the cotton gin. So, like, yeah, we stopped slavery, but we also uh, have a machine that can do it. Right. You know, it's like, yeah, I'll stop eating meat when you make the, the fake, fake meat. meat. That yeah. tastes exactly the same. When you make it convenient. So, we act, yeah, we act like we're such high and mighty saints over here, but we just replaced it. We just came up with a substitute. Right. You know, and it's kind of like, we'll all stop eating meat and we'll look back like those guys were pieces of shit. But also, we didn't have good genetic meat yet. Right. So once that comes in, yeah, we'll all stop. So we're not really heroes. We're just like, we're waiting till there's a better option right. or a different option. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Well, that was very helpful. All right. Thank you. Do you have anything else? Any newer th and new stuff? I, I got a ton, but I don't want to bore you. No, here. please, dude. Please. All right. All right. Well, I, this bit needs a bigger... It, it's hitting as these little zingers are hitting, but it, again, it needs that bigger uh, umbrella of an idea. So I went to New Zealand over the whatever, and they said uh, their stereotype in New Zealand, by the way, is that they have sex with animals. And I was like, oh, wow. I don't believe that. That's funny, but whatever. So I went and did a show in New Zealand. I said, hey, I... They, they say you, eat a you fuck animals. And one guy in the crowd goes, I fuck goats all the time. And I go, holy shit, what does that feel like? And he goes, kind of like a deer. No and that way. kills. Yeah. And Which sucks because he said it. Yeah, so, yeah. But now that's why I got to build on it. So I'm like, wow, I thought you were going to say a human being. You went with a completely different animal. I'm like, how many animals have you tried? And he's like, I bang deer, sheep, goat, This is real? Pig. This is real. And I was like, pig? We eat pig. And he goes, so do we. And so it's killing in the crowd. So I'm like, all right, I got something here. But I have, I need an angle. Because this is funny dialogue, but what's my point? You know, what's the point of this joke? So I thought of a couple different ways, and this is where I need your help. Okay, well, what are the ways you've thought so far? So I have a couple dumb, dumb lines, like, how do you prepare those pork chops? Bone in, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or yeah. like, we, act, we have to buy someone dinner to get laid. He's getting laid by dinner. You know? Oh, okay, yeah, that's good, too. So these are all silly lines, but what's my point? And I think, A, one angle could be, man, humans, we act like animals are so shitty and humans are so great, but animals just kill us. They don't fuck us. Yeah. No one's like, ah, oh, I was in the woods and this bear ate me, but he fucked me first. Right. No, he'll right. just eat you. A shark will just eat you. He's not fucking in the ass and then eating you. Right. So that, that never worked. I tried that. That didn't work. Uh, two, another angle is, um, uh, maybe this guy's smarter than us. We look at him like some kind of weird pervert cause he's fucking goats, but he's fucking the pig and eating the pig. So maybe he's getting a twofer. So maybe right. he's not so stupid. It's like when you hunt, uh, like people will get mad if you hunt unless you eat the food that you hunt, you're hunting, you know? Oh yeah. yeah it's like, well, I'm, it's, I'm putting, it's dinner on my plate. It's like, oh, all right. If you're hunting for fur, that's a different thing. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, it's a sport fuck. Right. Yeah. Um, also in the animal Liber liberation book, they talk about your point about like animals will just eat you. But like the the point in the book is that they uh, they only do what is necessary. Like we they eat uh, once, they'll kill you once, they'll eat, and then they'll leave you alone. Right. We have like made a sport out of it. I don't know. If that's but that's oh, not no, really. That, that's a good point. Like we just kill a deer and take a photo and then yeah. walk away. And also, you used to eat meat once a week because it was like hard to get. Now it's just like every meal oh, is meat. Oh wow. Um, but anyway. 
Uh, this is all. This is best. We're we're, we're two animal bit guys. Yeah, there. yeah. Um, I guess. Yeah, I guess the the question would be: Do you want to be forgiving of this guy, or do you want to be making fun of Maybe him? Maybe that's right? the question. Yeah. See, I don't need. I, I'm again. I'm so wrapped up in the bit. I can't see it. So I need your fresh the only, eyes. I'm trying. I, my instinct would say to go because there's a great Louis bit from the show oh, where oh, he talks. Really? Yeah, where he's like. Uh, the only reason I don't fuck animals is because people say it's wrong. And he was like, <laughs> and he says, like, if <laughs> I was the already la- great. Yeah. He's like, if I was the last guy on earth, I'd fuck an animal right away. He's like, I wouldn't even give enough time to know I was the last guy on earth. I'd walk outside and be like, oh, there's no traffic today. And just start fucking like a monkey. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like, oh, there's a guy. <laughs> like there's something like, like, like That's realizing. Hilarious. But. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to take the no, wind out no, of the no. sail or anything. But, I, but I, I didn't know about that bit. So that's good to know. Um, yeah. But I, I think go maybe here. going the route of, of then making fun of him. Or I, I do like the idea of saying why he's like a genius. Like, right. Because he's like getting the most of the animal. If anything, he's respecting the animal more because he's mm. getting... Because that's what they say when you hunt. It's like, well, you got to do right by the animal. Use the skin for this. Make the food. Use, use the, the whole buffalo. Yeah. So And also have sex with it. Oh, that's, that's like, good. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, he's using... he's. He's using the hoof, the antlers, the yeah. bone, and the vagina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how they like when you go to a, a pig roast? Like they'll have the they, literally they'll have the ear. Yes, and it's like yes. hair on it still. Right, right. The vagina still got a bush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, that's not bad. So it's almost a good thing. Almost, yeah. Because it is still probably rape. That's the that's the uh, that's the t- animal rape. Well, he, tough. he does talk about that in the bit too. He's like, I think the only reason you can't fucking animal is because it's always rape oh okay. a, well, and then he says like if a monkey's sitting there like and he like acts out a monkey fingering itself while you're fucking it then it's okay oh, that's hilarious yeah. that's a great boy he's good well Who's you're a good guy? company that's the least that's the uh, all right well we can't touch any of that right now do you uh, actually uh l orlando shout her out she was here yesterday she's a funny comedian but uh-huh. i told her you were gonna be here and i was like any questions and she said um one thing she was wondering about is like, if you come up with a great idea, do, should you go digging to see if it's been done, or should you just do it and worry about I, that I think later? You should, you should dig a little, but this it's tough because there's only so much you can do. Like I have like like five guys I'll text. Like, have you heard this? Have you heard this? And if they all say no, then I'm like, all right, that's pretty good. But I can't text every comic in America, and uh, I'll Google it. Yeah. I'll Google it. But even if some guy on Twitter in 1999, which Twitter didn't exist then, yeah. but 2009 is like. What's the deal with the coffee cups? And I'm like, I think you can still do it right. because he's not even a comedian and he'll never go anywhere with that yeah. bit. So I, I asked the friends, I, I Google, and that's as far as I can go. The worst is I made a whole video. I was super stoked on it. Sent it to my one friend. He's like, dude, sends me a link. Same exact joke. in the Like, it was just like, oh. I ended up re-editing it and managed to salvage it. But, like, it's just like, I feel like... Sometimes it's better to find out up front, but then you might end up not doing the thing. That I know. Would. I don't know. So I had a bit about Barbie that I wrote years ago, and thank God the movie came out. It like helped a bit. Yeah. But uh, it was all about Barbie, and this guy opened for me, and he went on before me, obviously, and did a insanely similar bit. And I was like, oh, shit. The bit was so similar that I had to not do mine that weekend because yeah. it was too weird. So I was like, oh, geez, you got a, the same Barbie bit as me. He's like, I've literally been doing this bit. For 16 years, it's on my dry bar. He sent me the dry bar from who knows when, and I was like, "You had it first. So, but my bit was longer, and it was it was doing well. Yeah. So I said, "Do you mind if I just keep my bit, but I'll take out all the similarities that you have?" Yeah. And he was like, "That's fine." Yeah. Because it went a different way. Right. It was all about Barbie, but it went his. He went that way. I went this way, and uh, that was our little. Yeah. Compromise. Yeah, so. I, I've noticed. I, I my instinct. I mean, I feel like nine times out of ten, when the bit is similar, like, or ninety nine. I guess that's the same ratio. But like, fucking, it's always just coincidence or. Pro oh, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I, I don't know. Like somebody sent me a video recently that it was like a very similar. Uh, I had a video go pretty viral, and then this guy made a video that was like a very similar joke. It ended up going kind of different at the end, but like the whole begin, like to the point where I was like almost sick because his video was going viral, <laughs> and it was made after mine. But I'm just like, part of me is like, ah, like I kind of got a little annoyed. But I'm yeah. like, dude, it's happened to me before where I've made something that I ended up seeing that was like, so I'm like, I, I, I would be a hypocrite to get mad at somebody that. Sure, sure, it happens all. The- I was on stage at the VU and I was having a hot set with new material. I felt so good. 
I get off stage. Sam Morrill's about to go on. He goes, you did my, my baby bit. And I'm like, I did? I just wrote that joke three days ago. He's like, yeah, yeah, I have that. And he sent me a clip, and it was exactly the same. Really? So obviously I just dropped it. He did on a Comedy Central special in, like, 1978. Yeah. And I was like, oh, sorry. And he goes, it happens. And I was like, there you go. That yeah. way we didn't have to have a fist fight or freak right. out or go on Twitter. And uh, I just dropped it. Right. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's my fear, too, is that I've, like, because there's times where I'll think of something funny and I'm like, I feel like there's somewhere in the back of my mind that almost it sounds I like know. something. And it happens. It just seeps in. Yeah. It's subconscious. You can't even tell. Well, that's because, like, for the, the, the bit you were just talking about, the fucking the animal, like, you can mine comedy from life. Like, it's like that guy said something really funny. And relaying that information is a skill in itself. Sure, sure. You know sure. it's funny enough to bring it to the stage. Yeah. So, but then you run the risk of, like, you know, mining somebody's actual joke if you're not thinking, I guess, is right, my right. point. Yeah. It's it's very common. And, and I think some people, you know, get off on it. They, they love catching it. The, you stole that bit. Like some guy in Cleveland, I had a joke. And he goes, this is a Mulaney bit. And I said, oh, shit. All right. I was on YouTube. And it's old, old bit of mine. And I looked up Mulaney's, and it came out like six years after mine. So I, I hit the guy back, and I was like, "Look at the dates," and he yeah. never wrote back. Interesting. So he just wanted to get me. The he, uh, I will say, well, there's two things. One, I guess because of your style of so many jokes, right? Being packed in, you're gonna, gonna accidentally tap people a lot. But, yeah. And also by doing the more storytelling, oh, I'm talking about me. Then you never really will run you're the right. risk of. You're right. But, you know. Obviously, you're doing well with what you're doing. So far, be it for me to be. But like, it happens all the time because yeah, it's it's so many jokes and and it's all these like loose angles of just shit, uh, observational shit. Yeah, gay people, black people, tables, women, my wife. You know, so it's uh, I'm not doing me, my right. childhood. So yeah, you're right. It's gonna happen. Um, but the problem is, people go, you got a bit about fucking animals. So does Louie, you thief. And I'm like, yeah, but they can be. He doesn't own animal fucking. Yeah. as a as a genre. Right. So, and he, yeah, like it's like, what is your take on the? It's like, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say co like it's like covering songs because that you know, that's obviously you're doing the same material or whatever, but yeah, people like song covers because they are you see their take on it, right? You, know? you see this Tori Amos uh stuff going on, no, you know, that song. I got a fast car, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like a big hit in the night, huge hit. So now some country guy is singing it. And he made his own country spin on it. And all these people were like, how dare you take a black woman's song, you white piece of shit, you know? And uh, she came out publicly and was like, he asked me, stop yelling at him. Not everything is a, a race war. Right, right. I love his version. Also, I'm getting crazy residuals. Yeah, So leave, too. stop yelling at the guy. And it was like a great moment of like, do we have to fight about it? Just when everything's black and white, it has to be this fucking... yeah. Farrakhan has to come out and Al Sharp has to give a speech and you're like, they're friends. They know each other. Yeah. Relax. And it's like you stand on the shoulders of giants, you know? It's like, I mean, like... Um, what does that mean? It means like, you, like you're like you only great because the people that came before you. You're oh, kind of like learning from them oh, and right. making it better or... I thought that was a Lizzo joke. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, the, uh, like, Mac DeMarco, you know him? I've you've heard the name. You've, you've definitely heard some of his songs. Yeah. Salad Days is a great one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't, there's so many musicians now, I can't keep yeah, up. Yeah, but the chorus from that song is at the end of a kink song. It's like the exact oh. melody. And he's the first to say it. He's like, I took the melody from this. But I could listen to those songs back to back and enjoy them completely independent of each of other. Course, yeah, of course, of so, course. I was um, listening to a, a Joe Cocker song, and it's like, you hear this hook, and you're like, oh, this is from a rap song. This is from Dr. Dre. And you're like... What, okay, they're both great right? songs. Dun, 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 dun. No, it, no, it's uh, California knows how to party. Oh yeah, yeah. That's an old hook from Joe Cocker from like nineteen whatever seventy two. So yeah, it's uh, it's all cyclical. And whenever people go, I hate that kind of music. I'm like, you maybe you do, but it might actually be in some of the music you like. Right. You know. Um. Yeah. Kanye does a lot of that. Those yeah. Just, like it's just sampled from some song, and then you hear it, and then you're like, oh wow, like he and. Which is cool. It's like it's similar to the comedy mining thing, where you go into old music. You're like, oh, right. I could use this piece to. Right. Um, so I guess w two of the things you've done, uh, you're gonna do them on stage, and I'll film them so we could show how they work. Sure, if you want, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other new ones you want to try? And also, 
my friends were nice enough to come to help set up and stuff. So if you guys had any ideas yeah, you wanted please. to throw at us, please. I'm desperate. For the uh, fucking animals one, um, you could say, like, he's doing dinner and uh, dessert. He's getting oh, yeah. And cream pie. Oh, oh that's good. yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm fucking hilarious. Follow me on Instagram. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to bleep all that. <laughs> <laughs> when you're, like, looking at, like, a joke that, like, you just have this thing that's funny. Like, it's just this one little thing. You're like, ah, oh, that's that little thing is hilarious. And it's like the more I dig, the less funny it gets. Yeah, yeah, I have that. Does it need to be this long thing, or can it just be this short, sweet thing? That's a, that's a great question. I think it doesn't always need to be. We think we have to be this pontificating uh, philosopher comic guy. And look, if you can get to that big thing, that's great, but it doesn't have to be. So if you're racking your brain for three years on a big chunk of a bit, and it's not coming, it might not be there. And, may, and put it to the side and go to it later. But uh, I think if you can get the quick laugh in this premise that's racking your brain, go with that and go from there. Like they say, build a, 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 an hour one sentence at a time. So if you can, if you got an idea and it's getting a quick laugh and you want more, just start with a quick, la quick laugh and elaborate on that because that's probably the funniest part. That's why it's getting a laugh. But if you are going to work on the chunk, it's probably going to take you months. So just know that going in. It might not, but it probably will. Well, I think a lot of comics try to seem smart. I do this. I'm guilty of it. We try to seem smart. Like, look at this. I figured out. Look at this brilliant uh, idea I have. But the smartest shit is just the simplest funny shit. You know, like Norm McDonald talking about his dad dying. Like, He's in a better place. He's on the floor. You yeah, know, like yeah. that is a, a heavy bit and there's a lot behind it. But it's just this quick little joke. And that to me, that is actually smarter than if he had this big death, you know, idea and philosophizing about uh, all that and the dirt ph isn't enough for yeah yeah, it's like, yeah, no, it's yeah. Line and exactly the smart part is like gillis is really good at that gillis has a lot of jokes where it's it's almost very simple but there's so much behind it you're like oh yeah like the laugh you Chappelle too Chappelle's a lot of his old stuff was a lot of like uh you know like super interesting points and um and and jokes but like that's what makes it smart right. the fact that you simplified this giant this giant idea into the uh, joke one thing i realized with shane too a lot of the things that he does that makes me laugh is like when he's being in the character that he's talking yeah about. yeah yeah that's where a lot of the humor i like it's not always so much the punchline as much as he's being somebody yeah and, yeah and he does a yeah he, he yeah squints his eyes yeah yeah it's a great um, so I think don't try to sound smart or important and try to make it this idea as funny as possible. Obviously, that's what you're doing, but I think that will come off as smart. Where were you where this guy like said he was fucking all these animals? Well, he was in the crowd. They were like, what country? What country were you in? Oh, New Zealand. Sorry. New Zealand. Did you ever, have you ever explored like why this guy is trying out so many animals? Like, no, I haven't. Like the angle I thought about is like, what about dating is so bad or trying to have sex with a human woman that he's gone through so many. Oh, that's it's interesting. It's like, oh, I'd probably fuck the whole farm if I had to pay for this girl's dinner too, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And then yeah. you could be like, oh, uh, he's trying to take some of these like uh, things he's learned fucking animals and try and bring them to dating. Oh, right. yeah. that's oh, great. Like that's great. Like, his first date, he's like, oh, here's this restaurant. It's just like a trough. <laughs> yeah he's petting that's her that's yeah awesome. that's, really good that's great that's yeah, great but i had a question actually for you we're talking about like joke writing i'm finding these days that when i'm getting good jokes on stage i fall into this thing of like i'm gonna keep writing in this formula and so i'll find that every new joke i come off of is kind of molded by the past jokes that have worked so i guess the question is like do you try and sh like shake up the types of jokes you're doing or do you just go this is what i think is funny Great question. Uh, I I tend to be too formulaic, so I'm uh, I'm guilty of this as well. Cause you know you you do what works, and we're trying to get laughs here. So uh, I think it is better to shake it up. Like like Carlin is great. He has a lot of shit, but he's great because he has every discipline. He'll do a pun over here, then he'll do social commentary, then he'll tell a story, then he'll have like a offensive bit, then a dirty bit, and all that. And I'm like, that's why it's fun to watch, and you never get bored in an hour. Because you're like, whoa, he went from here to here. Now he's on uh, talking about uh, the government, and now he's talking about his uh, pussies, you know? So I think it's good to to shake it up and just try to get a laugh wherever you can. I mean, don't be hacky or unoriginal, but, like, any way you can get a laugh, get that laugh. And if that if that means a pun or if that means a, a brilliant point or an observation, I'd say chase them all. Yeah. 
And I noticed that like you're very observation heavy. Yeah. But then I saw you do that. This is not happening. Where you talk about your um, your teacher or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and that was like a really big difference. I, don't, I noticed you don't do stories that Huge. often. Is there any Huge reason do you just gravitate more towards the? Yeah, and it, I like quick jokes. I like getting in and out. And it's like we said before that that story was really hard for me. Like bombing with it, and like because you're bombing for ten minutes. It's not like oh that joke didn't work. On to the next one. It was like no, you're stuck in this. Yeah, you have to finish it. Yeah, and I hate that feeling, but I should man up and get better at that. Yeah. So yeah, just kind of mix be, it up. Get back to the open mic mindset i guess of like well this is like because you bomb you obviously had to bomb a lot at one point yeah yeah i just love the idea of it's almost like a one night stand versus marriage you know you can right. get in you can get out uh, even if it's bad you can get out of there yeah and if marriage is bad you're kind of stuck in it right you right. know um but it's more fulfilling to build a family right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly um i hope i i hope i helped you i felt like i Okay, okay. I feel like I ranted a little there. Sorry. Plug away and all that stuff. Okay. Hey, watch the special on Netflix, Soup to Nuts. A lot of work went into those bits. A lot of this kind of uh, minutia, horse shit, comedy talk. And uh, Tuesdays with Stories, we might be drunk. We're all over the road. Check it all out. And come see me on the road, MarkNormanComedy.com. A lot of big a lot of big dates. Sweet. Yeah, thanks for doing this again. I, I feel like I might, I don't know, I've, I've done like little mini versions of this with buddies and I made like a YouTube short out of it. But uh, it's always fun doing this. And uh, yeah, I, th- I think this was a really good one. So that's why I'm kind of ending it here unless you have anything else you want to say or. No, no. Hey, hope you're doing better, Lizzo. Yes, uh, we're, we're rooting for you. Yeah, and thanks for that banana. Anybody here got kids? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, a couple people. Yeah, I think I'd like to have kids, but it seems hard. You know, my buddy's got a 17-year-old daughter. He found her diary. Oh, he's, he's like, I accidentally opened it. I, I saw too much. She's sexually active. I'm freaking out. I can't look at the same. I wish I never read it. Kind of makes you think. Maybe it's good they got Anne Frank when they did. Well, it's just, it's, you know. well. Obviously, what happened was horrible and, and terrible, but uh, if she would have been two years older, that book would be completely different. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I'd be like, well, I read that book in eighth grade. It was powerful. It was important. But if that was two years later, I'd be like, wow, another hand job, huh? Holy <laughs> shit. Jesus Christ. Boy, that Amsterdam is wild. Whoa, finger popping, huh? Holy hell. Even her dad would be like, when are these Nazis showing up? Jesus Christ. Holy hell. <laughs> okay. Just joking. I'm a comedian. I don't actually think that. All right. Um, yeah. I know that's my new favorite joke, but it's, uh, it's terrifying the public. But uh, they always say, hey, do what you think is funny. And then I do it and people shit blood. So I don't know. Uh, I got, yeah. Popped down to New Zealand. Did some show. Their big stereotype is they have sex with animals. I was like, oh, that can't be true. So I asked the guy, I go, hey, so they say you fuck animals. One guy in the crowd goes, I fuck goats all the time. I was like, holy shit. What does that feel like? He goes, kind of like a deer. Uh, Wow. I thought you were going to go with a human being. You went with a completely different animal. I was like, how many animals are you banging, man? He was like, goat, sheep, deer, pig, you name it. I was like, Jesus Christ, we eat most of that shit. He goes... So do we. Oh, man. How does that dinner party go? How'd you prepare these pork chops? Doggy style. <laughs> oh, yeah, bone in. You know me. And I go, why don't you get yourself a lady, man? What are you doing with these animals? That's fucked up. And he was like, ah, women, it's a lot of work. Like, well, you got a point there. You know, just, well, I'm taking a woman, they got to buy dinner to get laid. There he's getting laid by dinner, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. You can just take a. And look, obviously, you know, you should, you should court your lady, but, you know, well, let's be honest. With a pig, you can be like, there's your trough. All right. There we go. You don't have to shower. No chit chat. No small talk. You don't have to come up with funny things to say. Pretty good. You're not going to go back to a woman after that. And usually you're not eating the lady, you know? So. <laughs> Gonna stick with the animal. You can fuck it and eat it. You got it made. Maybe this guy's smarter than us. 
All right. Um, 